This is the Mach Zenter interferometer, what has been explained by Benjamin Schumacher in his TTC course of The Physics of the Microscopic World. In this interferometer, a light beam from a laser source is passing through a beam splitter. The beam splitter is a half silver mirror, which reflects 50% of light and transmits another 50% of light. It splits the light into two beams. The upper beam is reflected and the lower beam is transmitted. Both beams reach full silvered mirror fixed at two corners to reflect into another beam splitter which is a half silvered mirror. There are two light detectors labeled A and B at both exits. As the lower beam is negative in amplitude and interferes with upper beam, the light beam always strikes detector A. No light beam strikes detector B. Let us see how this experiment goes in our lab. This is the laser light source producing red light with 650 nanometer wavelengths. This is the aperture to reduce the light intensity. This is the beam splitter of half silver mirror which reflects and transmits 50-50 lights. These full silvered mirrors, which are fixed at both corners, reflect the light with a pace shift of 1 pi. Finally, both light beams reach the second beam splitter of half silvered mirror, which reflects and transmits 50-50 lights. The combined light beam is expected to strike the detector A. When I set it up and turn on the laser light, the light beams reach both detectors. These are not combined and don't strike only detector A. I am able to see the lights strike both screens. I tried with perfect alignment of beam splitter, mirrors, rotating beam splitters and all possible ways. Still light beams reach both screens and the result is not as expected. I googled it and found the reason for this behavior. The pace shift of light beam needs to be considered in order to understand this behavior. Dielectric beam splitter is the one we need to do the test which shows expected result. The light beam reflected by the front surface of dielectric beam splitter doesn't occur pace shift. But the light beam reflected by the back surface does occur pace shift. First, let us follow the upper light beam until it enters into the second beam splitter. In the beginning, it is transmitted by the first beam splitter and occurs no pace shift. Then, it is reflected by the right full silvered mirror and occurs pace shift of pi. Now, the upper beam has pace shift of 1 pi. Next, let us follow the lower light beam until it enters into the second beam splitter. In the beginning, it is reflected by the first beam splitter and occurs no pace shift. The light beam reflected by the front surface of dielectric beam splitter doesn't occur pace shift. Then it is reflected one more time by the left full silvered mirror and occur pace shift of pi. Both beams are having pace shift of pi. If we follow the upper beam inside the second beam splitter, the upper beam is splitted by 50% reflected and 50% transmitted. The light beam reflected by the back surface does occur pace shift. Upper reflected occurs pace shift and upper transmitted occurs no pace shift. Remember that before entering into second beam splitter, the upper beam had pace shift of 1 pi. So the previous pace shift has been cancelled. Now the upper reflected occurs no pace shift and upper transmitted has pace shift of 1 pi. Next, let us follow the lower beam inside the second beam splitter. The second beam splitter splits the lower beam by 50% reflected and 50% transmitted. Remember that before entering into second beam splitter, the lower beam had pace shift of 1 pi. The light beam reflected by the front surface of dielectric beam splitter doesn't occur pace shift. Lower reflected beam occurs pace shift of pi. 
and lower transmitted beam occurs phase shift of pi so this is the situation at the end if you see at the detector b side the two beams are having different phases and generate a destructive interference and if you see at the detector a side the two beams are having same phases and generate constructive interference this is the reason the combined beam is expected to strike only the detector a but this is what we are seeing in our test the beams are reaching both detectors the reason for this unexpected behavior is that the length of both upper and lower paths must be same to keep same phase in all time and location but it is very difficult to us to keep same length at a nanometer level so we are not able to see the beam strikes only detector a